This video is going to look at the differences between our CCOT system and the TXV system. We're going to look at the mechanical or the hardware differences between the two. Uh, there are differences in the electrical controls as well, but that will be covered in the controls videos. First question that always comes up, which one is better? Answer, neither. If there was one that was better than the other, the majority of manufacturers would pick one or the other, but that's not the case. It seems to be about a 50-50 split uh, in the heavy duty world and as well in automotive as to whether it's CCOT or TXV. Why don't we start with the CCOT basics? First off, what does it stand for? It's an acronym for a clutch cycling orifice tube system. What does that mean? Or what is unique about it? What's unique is that the system uses a fixed orifice, whereas we'll show you later in the video, the TXV system uses a variable orifice. And as well with the CCOT, it uses an accumulator mounted on the low side versus the TXV system, which will use a receiver dryer that's mounted on the high side. Look back at a basic block drawing of the air conditioning system, which we'll be referencing a lot. Everything on the low pressure side is colored in blue. Normal pressure 10 to 40, somewhere in that neighborhood. We have a dividing line just for uh, drawing purposes and everything on the red side of the system is the high pressure side and it's normal running pressure somewhere between 100 and 250. The reason the pressure ranges are so broad is that there are a lot of variables that can affect the pressure in an air conditioning system at any moment so it's hard to nail down a very specific pressure. How does the system work? What are the fundamentals of it again? Well, starting at the compressor, coming out of that compressor, we've got a high pressure vapor. As that vapor works its way through the hose and into the condenser and winds its way through that condenser, what it's doing is giving off heat. Okay? So the condenser is responsible for removing heat from the refrigerant, allowing it to condense from a vapor back into a liquid. Now, as that condenser is getting rid of heat, it's changing the state of that refrigerant. So if everything is going well with the system, working properly, charged correctly, by the time that that refrigerant comes out of the condenser, what we should have is a liquid. Still high pressure, but now in the liquid form. Refrigerant as a liquid now works its way towards the orifice, still under pressure the whole way. And right on the other side of the orifice, the pressure is going to drop. So we come in as a high pressure liquid into the orifice and we come out of the orifice now as a low pressure liquid. Now, as that refrigerant makes its way into the evaporator and starts winding through the coils and through the fins, the blower motor is constantly pushing cab air through the evaporator. The heat that's trapped in that air is now absorbed by the evaporator and transferred into the liquid refrigerant. As that liquid refrigerant works its way through the evaporator, it changes from a liquid to a gas by absorbing heat. So coming out of our evaporator, in a perfect world, we should have pure vapor. However, depending on whether the system is working properly or whether it's charged correctly, there could be some liquid coming out as well. So we have this piece called the accumulator. Now 
Now you notice the accumulator is on the low side of the system. Okay. It will typically be mounted someplace where there's a lot of heat available. Engine bay is a very common place to find these on the firewall. So the accumulator, you could think of it really as a settling tank. If there happens to be any liquid, I'm going to put a question mark because we may or may not have liquid coming out. It depends on whether everything's working right and again, whether the charge level is correct. If there is liquid though coming out of the evaporator, the accumulator will actually act as a settling tank, if you will. And that liquid can sit in the bottom and because the accumulator is mounted in a high heat area, heat will still be absorbed. Now the accumulator has a standpipe in it, typically bent in a U shape, so it'll look something like this. Because again, what we want to make sure is that we are drawing pure vapor into that compressor. Compressors again do not like liquid because liquid does not compress and it can actually damage the reed valves. So we should have, or we want to have, or we must have, vapor under low pressure at that compressor inlet. This is the fixed orifice tube used with a CCOT system. Now if you notice, this particular, the top one uses two O-rings, the bottom one only uses one. But where you'll find the orifice tube is pressed typically into a pipe, okay, very close to the inlet of the evaporator. So if you just imagine that the red lines are a piece of pipe, the O-rings right here will seal the high side from the low side. There has to be a distinct separation between the two sides or we won't get the pressure drop. Refrigerant will just continue to cycle through. This is a cutaway drawing of the accumulator. Now here's my inlet, again coming from the evaporator. And in a perfect world, it should be pure vapor. However, as we said before, there may or may not be a little bit of liquid coming out because the orifice is fixed, it has no metering capability. So again, if need be, this accumulator will simply act as a settling tank. Liquid can drop to the bottom and vapor will be drawn off the top through this U-shaped standpipe and go off to the compressor. There is a little bit of a refrigerant bleed hole in the bottom of the pipe. Really, it, what it does is it uses the Venturi effect because oil is always mixing with refrigerant and circulating through the system and oil can actually settle in the accumulator as well. So if we get enough oil settled in the bottom of that accumulator, it will be picked up in the refrigerant bleed hole and circulated with that refrigerant to go back to the compressor inlet. Let's look at the TXV system now, the basics of it. What does it stand for? It stands for thermal expansion valve. What's the difference between it and a CCOT? Well, TXV system uses a variable orifice, so it's able to meter the flow of refrigerant. And it does not use an accumulator on the low side but rather a receiver dryer on the high side. Here's our block drawing again. Same basic idea. We've got the compressor, we've got the condenser, we've got the evaporator, but now we've got the receiver dryer over on the high side of the system. And the orifice is drawn a little bit differently. It, I draw it as a block and by Putting the orifice with an arrow through it, that makes it variable. There's a slide coming up, we'll show you how this uh, expansion valve actually works. 
Again, we've got our dividing line between the low side and the high side with our relatively normal pressures. What happens as far as heat being absorbed and heat being released, vapor to liquid, uh, liquid to vapor, the pressure drop, all of that is identical to the CCOT system. Let's look at the difference now in the orifice and then the difference in the receiver. This is the block style thermal expansion valve. Very, very commonly used now with the TX ski system because it is so compact. Now, we're going to draw our evaporator in over here. And our pass through at the top and we're going right back to our compressor. The orifice change colors here. The orifice is actually right here and right here. Now what we've got is a spring and a ball on a seat and the spring is for is always trying to say less flow. So spring wants less. As that refrigerant works its way through, through the evaporator, as we discussed earlier, it's absorbing heat and it's changing from a liquid into a vapor. Now right in this area, right in here, temperature is being sensed. And the higher the temperature that's being sensed in this area, the higher the pressure inside of this sealed bulb will go. Because we can just kind of color that in a little bit. In here, the sealed sensing bulb is actually full of refrigerant. Now, as the, the temperature of the refrigerant coming out of the evaporator starts to drop, so will the pressure inside of that sealed sensing valve. When the pressure inside the sensing bulb starts to drop off, the spring, who's always trying to go for less flow, will win the battle and close off the orifice as much as it can. Now, something to realize is that this orifice can never ever completely close off. If you have an expansion valve that is completely closed off, it's because something has gone wrong and you've got a blockage right in this area. There always has to be a minimal amount of flow. So again, Refrigerant coming out of the evaporator, if it's at a relatively low temperature, because the system doesn't have to work very hard on that day, then the pressure in the diaphragm will be lower as well, and the spring will overcome and win the battle. If it's a really, really hot day, say like 40 degrees Celsius in Texas in the middle of summer, the refrigerant coming out of the evaporator is going to be relatively warm. That pressure sorry, that temperature will affect the pressure inside of the sealed sensing bulb, causing the pressure in the bulb to go up. And as the pressure goes up, the bulb is able to push harder on this pintle and unseat the ball and get more flow through the evaporator. So really what this unit is, it's a temperature sensing variable flow control. The higher the temperature it senses, the more flow it wants to allow. The lower the temperature it senses, the less flow it wants to allow. And the last thing to look at is the receiver dryer itself. Again, this is mounted on the high side and the, the uh, standpipe is different. With an accumulator, we want to make sure that we are drawing vapor because that's the last stop before the compressor inlet. Because the dryer is mounted on the high side, 
the standpipe is actually drawing from the bottom. So what we want, in this case, is we want liquid, uh, best case, to be full right to the very top. So we draw the liquid off the bottom, and we send that liquid off to the expansion valve or the orifice.